But one of those areas that Mr. Dahosa talked about is the Dangote, talking about energy, security. We did have this conversation on Business Incorporated uh, yesterday with an executive from Dangote. But let's look at it from the economics perspective now with the Chief Executive Officer of Financial Derivatives Company, Mr. Bismarck Rowani. Mr. Rowani joins us in the studio. Mr. Rowani, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for your time coming into the studio. We appreciate that. So, um, well, the, of course, consumers or Nigerians are being pushed on many sides. Uh, yesterday, we talked about the possibility of telecoms. They are hinting us that they might, you know, implement their own hike also of tariff. But at least we have one soccer coming from Dangote. And so we see Dangote telling us that diesel is not, it's not even going to be the 1,225, they said. It's not going to be 1,000. Oh, nice. So, of course, this um, uh, gives us a little bit of relief as Nigerians. Yeah even though we wonder um, how long it will take for this to sip down into real commodity prices. Thank you. Uh, I think, as you can say and see, the point is that what's the almighty power of diesel? Why diesel? Diesel is so important, right? In the fractional distillation column of um, the refinery. So the almighty power of, of diesel. diesel. Yes. <laughs> you can see the price is down from 1,700, which it was last year, to 1,000 naira. This is big, right? But it's not just why, why diesel? We talk about petrol, we talk about this. Diesel is very, very. Petrol seems to be the most popular yeah, the, in, in, the in the petroleum product in Nigeria. In Nigeria, but that is not the truth. The truth is that diesel is used for powering trucks across different parts of the country. It is used for your generators, right? It is used for thermal uh, production of cement in furnaces, and it is so significant, right, in the, in the process. And you will see as we go along, what is the impact of a reduction of this magnitude in diesel, especially the price of diesel when it was 1,700, the global price of oil was 75. Today, the global price of oil is 88, 88 just and yet the price. So there's that inverse relationship now, and that is, tells you that if the price of oil was at 74, which it was nine, six months ago, then you would have been seeing diesel at 800 naira a liter. Hmm. So, but, but, but I'd like to ask, um, we don't have price control in yes. Nigeria. So Dangote is selling at 1,000 naira. Obviously, the retailers, those who buy from him, are going to do markup yes. for their logistics, for their profits, and all of that. Uh, is there anything to stop them from still exploiting consumers? No, there is, because the supply. Dangote has capacity for 650,000 barrels a day. If you store it, uh, basically, if you want to speculate and hoard diesel, you spend so much time, you spend a lot of money for hoarding, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Because the cost of storing it become much more than your margin you make. And you'll be speculating. So if you speculate that the price of oil is going to go back up and then you're storing it, no, you're going to lose. Mm. And you can see that is where the diesel price has gone all the way up and now Probably it's down this way. Yeah. Uh, now all the way this way. And then we see it's obviously connected to the headline right, inflation. Headline inflation. There is a strong correlation between the price of diesel and inflation because diesel is used for many of those products and we'll get to that in a minute right but the reality is that let us take for example the, a loaf of bread a loaf of bread is today costing 1400 depending on this loaf of bread okay. right diesel accounts for 25 percent of the cost of production for bakeries because once you start once you start the oven if you're using Nepal or whatever you, if, if there's a power cut, the dough fly, you lose everything. So once you want to start the oven, you put on your, all your generators on, and this drives it. And based on this configuration, you will see that the price of bread by the end of next month will be down to 1,200. Because- Can we hold you to that, Mr. Rwani? <laughs> that, theoretically, yes. <laughs> now let's go to a tuba of yam. Yes, really because expensive these Very days. expensive, 3,500, the current price. Because the cost of transportation has reduced, if you're buying diesel at 1,000 rather than 1,700, that loaf of bread, that tuba of yam,
could come down to as low as 2,700 Naira. Very, very important because logistics cost is a, a major part. In fact, 15% of, of cost of companies is logistics and distribution. This brings it down. Then, the most perishable of them all, which is tom tomatoes, 35,000 Naira current price. If you bring it down, and because the cost of transporting it is faster, and the cost of storing it in your storage depot comes down, you can bring it down to 25,000. All of this is based on the fact that if this price is held and is sustainable, the question you ask is that, what is the landed cost of diesel if you're importing it? The landed cost of diesel today is about almost 1,100. Therefore, we, are, we have no choice but to buy from our local, our local refinery. That is the modular refineries, the Dangote refineries, and the old refineries that are being resuscitated with the turnaround maintenance. So this is what, what, what we are seeing. And it goes on. And the impact, <clears throat> the impact, this is where, uh, what is the thing that determines the price of diesel? The global price of oil, which you've, we've seen, it's not an idiot. The distribution cost of diesel has to be transported itself with the trucks, right, and the tankers. Then the power grid. We've had so many collapses. Normally, at a time when you have so many collapses, the demand for diesel which will increase, right, because we are transmitting only about three to 4,000 megawatts. Actually, we are seeing a drop in the price of diesel, which means the supply of diesel is probably far in excess of the aggregate demand. At this so, so, so it, it begs this question, is this 1,000 Naira by Dangote sustainable? You know, because, okay, you have noted yes. the determinant. And of course, we know by now, um, because at this point, what's going on between Israel and okay. Iran, right. we see prices, global oil prices going up. And yet we see 1,000 Naira in Nigeria. Is that sustainable? Why? Because Nigeria produces crude. Nigeria refines this crude for now. But the global, the Nigerian economy is vulnerable to exogenous shocks. There's nothing you can do. And we do. know that Dangote is importing crude. Importing in some days, they are also buying domestically from NNPC. We are hoping that NNPC will continue to supply Dangote and the local refineries and the modular refineries. If that happens, you might be able to actually sustain this price. But there are too many things that are going on at the same time. Exchange rate appreciation, which is now uh, stabilizing. When all of these things come together, you will find that, like you said, the impact on the economy, let's take this one after the other. Yes. GDP growth is going to expand at least to 4.5% because of this, if it is sustained over a year. It had about 1 to 1.5% to GDP. Inflation rate comes down because of the transportation effect and all of those. If inflation and rate, food. And food. Food inflation, core inflation. But there's a higher profit margin because... Once costs come down for companies, then their margins increase, and then they'll be able to pass this on to consumers or increase their profitability. Of course, lower operating costs. But what is more important that... And this is interesting, higher salaries, Mr. Rwani. This yes. is very important. <laughs> well, you have to pay. You, what happens is that if, when inflation reduces, you are effectively increasing salaries because people are Purchasing spending less. Purchasing power increases. Absolutely. But also, we, are, we still have the minimum wage issue, which is hanging in the, you know which is the big elephant in the room. So if you have an increase in minimum wage, at the same time as reducing cost of production, it's a win-win for workers and a win-win for government because the government gets higher taxes, GDP grows, inflation lower, exchange rate stays stable and begins to appreciate. Um, yeah, Mr. Mr. Ryan, let's deviate a bit. I saw um, a story uh, on Bloomberg that Nigeria is going to be the fourth largest economy we used to be the first um this i mean talking about this gdp that we're going to be the fourth now because of uh devaluation, Naira, devaluation <clears throat> and all of that and, and yeah. obviously that that is uh, heartbreaking um but, but what i want to ask is there's the issue of rebasing and um well we've celebrated naira appreciating unfortunately in the last couple of days it's been depreciating do you see us escaping that no yeah, definitely that that figure is for December 2023. By December, in December 2023, the exchange rate had got as far as high as 1,900. Now that exchange rate has appreciated to about 1,100. One now, therefore, if you take the position as of December, that could be true. 
the GDP will come to about almost $284 billion. But if you, if you add about 30% back because the exchange rate, you have to take 30% of the, that, that almost $300 billion. So you, you come back towards the 380 to 400 billion. So I wouldn't lose any sleep about the size of the economy. But what about now that the Naira seems to be depreciating again? No, it's only depreciated by one or two percent. So that, and it's no currency stays static. There's dynamic equilibrium in, and misalignment of the currency. When things change, the price of oil increases, your diaspora flows increase, you have your euro bond program coming up. The currency would, would be more stable rather than volatile. And the reality is that we think that, yes, it, it's been overbought in terms of it's gone all the way. In fact, some people are doing transactions at below 1,000. Uh, 1,100? Yes, uh, uh, the week. BBC told us yes. that they were purchasing at 980. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, it kind of sounds like, like artificial. And we think that it will stabilize at current levels and will not depreciate very sharply at least in the next two to three weeks. So tell us um, uh, back to <laughs> 1,000 Naira. Uh, how much do uh, you, you have a company you, yes, you, you, you purchased deal. in recent times since um, um, Dangote started the 1,000 Naira thing? How, have, you, have you bought a, a diesel? How yeah, much? I bought diesel, but when I tried to buy diesel, the guy sold it at about 1,240. He said he bought diesel before at 1,400. So selling it to me at 1,250 is that he's blending part of the new price with the old price. And I didn't have, to, I didn't have time to wait because I had uh, no power. So I had to buy it at 1,250. Uh, am I going to buy that at 1,250 next week? No, obviously. As the price comes down and the Dangote supply gets into the market, we begin to bring down it, the average cost. It's not just the marginal cost. The average cost of the diesel in the tank, which he has bought, right will now go down but the question is that when the price of diesel went up they sold the old stock at the new price exactly now because they the said they this, wanted to prepare for restocking yeah now that the price of diesel has come down they are selling the old stock at the old price and are not selling the new stock at the new price so but again is it a nigerian thing is it, well no consumers in theory the consumer is always a king in reality in nigeria Consumer is probably the slave. <laughs> Unfortunately. So, I mean, apart from diesel, uh, Dangote has promised, I think they're already doing jet fuel. Yes. Uh, the executive told us yesterday. But, I mean, I think the biggest one would be petrol, uh, where we're told that it will be in supply in a couple of weeks. Yes. But, listen, next week they're coming up with dual-purpose kerosene, which is part aviation fuel and part kerosene being used. But also, you know, because the price of kerosene is likely to decline, You've seen the price of cooking gas also begin to drop. So these things have a, a pull effect, on, you know, and it pulls all the prices in the same direction. So what are you going to see at the end of the day? Core inflation, which is more structural, will be a bit sticky. Food inflation, which depends on movement of goods, will begin to decline. And the non-food basket begins to decline. However, you know that the price of diesel is very, very important for the base stations of the telecom, teleco, telcos. So there are at least almost 40 to 50,000 base stations in the country, right? And those base stations run on diesel. They have three generators in each base station. They run on diesel. If the price of diesel has come down from 1,700 to 1,000, it means the cost of running those base stations will drop automatically. But there are other costs that go into because there are a lot of things are going to telco and the discussion of the telco price pricing is a discussion for another day not today obviously but i mean sometimes isn't it scary that it seems a lot is being expected of dangote we're talking of diesel which is the major field for industrial activities yes we're talking of jet fuel for the aviation sector and now we're looking forward to petrol and so everything coming from one source it sounds scary isn't it no it's a uh, now, the, the, the fear of what you call a monopoly, that is not a potent fear. Right? The reality is that there are Port Harcourt, two refineries, Kaduna, Wari refineries. There are modular refineries, right? So, and Dangote's refinery being the single largest, single train largest in the world, 650,000 barrels a day is to, is to support 
the whole of West and Central Africa. So not only with the Dangote refineries producing for Nigeria, they'll be producing for the rest of West Africa and Central Africa. And so the economies of scale begin to kick in. Nigeria begins to benefit. And you'll find that, I understand, that the Dangote refinery is going to be listed. So Nigerians will have a chance to buy into it. And when they buy into it, uh, then what we call the democracy of capitalism, where there'll be many shareholders and we're getting the dividends. I think that's, but the most important thing is that will it help to spur growth? Yes. Will it help to create employment? Yes. Is it important that it has a linkage with other areas? It's very important. Therefore, it's not whether it's the Dangote refining, the refining process for Nigeria, including all the other refineries, will benefit, and the Nigerian people will benefit eventually. I think that's, that's, it. that's called the message that bringing down the price of diesel, if it is sustainable and it's maintained that way, will help to bring down the cost of doing business in Nigeria and the profitability of companies that are operating all over the country. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Mr. Rwani. I think even the president of LCC has said, I mean, governments and people of Nigeria should support Dan Gote and, you know, people like uh, Airpiece, you know, because these are domestic entrepreneurs feeding... But even international people. airlines are going to be refueling in Nigeria because the price of aviation fuel here will be lower than refueling in other locations. So. Sorry. I can imagine what that could do, especially to our FX liquidity. That that will really go along. Well, you know, every drop matters. Every yes. drop matters, and every notes, <laughs> every matters. dollar matters. You better you, you better believe that. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, uh, Thank to you, the Executive of Financial Derivatives Company. Thank you for Thank your you. time.